All right, so for this one, everywhere that there's an X, what are we gonna do? Plug in four to the X. So it'll be one plus, or just four X. One plus four X plus, what did you get next? Good, over, and I would just leave it two factorial. Actually, you know what? When we go out to write the general term, let's leave it like completely unsimplified. Let's do four X squared over two factorial plus four X cubed over three factorial. Cause the less simplified it is, the easier it is to write the general term. So what did you put for the general term? Yeah, good, four X to the end. You're literally just plugging that in over and factorial. That's it, got it. Did that go okay? E is one of the easier ones. So same with this. We're gonna multiply every term by X. You're literally just distributing an X through here. We have the series for E to the X, and then we're just gonna multiply an X through there. So that'll be X plus X squared plus X cubed over two factorial plus X to the fourth over three factorial. And then for the general term, still gonna be over N factorial. Um, what did you put in the numerator? Good, yeah, you just have to add one because you distributed an X to there. I'm gonna come back to three. I'm just doing the ones that I asked you guys to do first. All right, this one's a little tricky because there's two things going on with it. So first of all, here's your series for cosine. First thing we're gonna do is subtract one. Here's how easy this is, are you ready? Now the one is gone. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's it. Then you're gonna take every one of those terms that's left and divide it by an X. So this one's gone. We divide all of these by an X. It'll be negative X over two factorial plus, and then what will the next one be? X cubed over four factorial minus X to the fifth over six factorial. Oh, wait, we need one more because it said the first four non-zero terms. So it'll be plus X to the seventh over eight factorial. I guess this will be minus for the next one. Dot, dot, dot. And then we want the general term. All right, I would write out off to the side like zero once. Oh, first let me take care of the fact that it's alternating. If I don't do that right away, I'm gonna forget. Now it was negative one to the N but do you see how the first term's not there anymore? Like the first term was positive. Now the first term's negative. So it'll be negative one to the N plus one. Good. And then I'm just gonna write out zero, one, two, three off to the side. We always start them at zero. Like the first term is actually the zero term. And the exponents aren't the same as the factorials anymore. So I'm gonna look at them separately. Let me just look at the numerator. We want the first power to be one and then three, five, seven. So when you plug in zero, you wanna get one. When you plug in one, you wanna get three, so on and so forth. So like write it out off to the side if that helps you or just think about it and however your brain does it. It'll be X to the two N plus one. Let's see if that works. And yes, good. All right, and then I'm gonna write it out again, zero, one, two, three. For the denominators, we want the factorials to come out to be two, four, six, eight. So what would we need to have in there? So when you plug in zero, you wanna get two. When you plug in one, you wanna get four. Two N plus two, good. This helps, right? Like, I don't know, it helps me. That's what I mean. All right, let's go back and get this one. The reason I told you to skip this one is it's not like what we were just doing. This is like what we did last time. It's a geometric series. Do you see the pattern? A over one minus R, what's A? Good, two and R is X squared. So you're gonna start with two and then just keep multiplying by X squared. So two is the first one, which when we write out the general term, that's the zeros term. So two X squared plus two X to the fourth, good, plus two X to the sixth and so on and so forth. And it'll be two, X squared to the N, because if it's zero, that'll just be one. If it's, two, yeah, there we go. Two X squared or X to the two N, I guess you could say. All right, these ones down here, you don't have to write the general term for. 
They both involve sine of x and e to the x. So I wrote out sine of x right here for you. I wrote out e to the x right here. For this one, we're just adding them together. And you only have to go until you get the first four non-zero terms. So after that, you can stop. I mean, these series go forever. These are infinite, but we're just going until we get the first four non-zero terms. So adding them together, uh, we would start with one plus what would come next? Good, because they both have an X, right? So we're combining those together. So two X. And then we want to keep things in order. So that's to the first. Do we see a term that's to the second? Yeah, so x squared over 2 factorial. And then something to the third. Ooh, a little bit interesting there. What happens with those? Yeah, they're going to cancel out, right? We have a minus x cubed over 3 factorial and a plus x cubed over 3 factorial. So those are gone. So now we're going to the fourth power. And it'll be this term here. So plus x to the fourth over four factorial. So occasionally, you need to go further than you think you might need to, because stuff like that can happen. And same thing with this. We're going to multiply them. But you need to make sure you go out far enough to combine any like terms that might happen. So that's why I wrote this out all the way to the, I'm going to go all the way until I get to the fifth power. OK. So first, let's distribute a 1. We distribute a 1 through here. We're going to go out to the fifth power. I think that'll be more than enough, but you want to go like far enough so that you get everything you need. If you distribute a one, you would get what? X and then minus X cubed over three factorial. It's just like itself, right? Plus X to the fifth over five factorial. That'll be far enough. We'll go out to the fifth power for each one. Now we're going to distribute an X into each of these. We're trying to multiply two infinite series together. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like an infinite number of terms. So you wanna just go like far enough because you can't go infinite. All right, distributing an X, what is that gonna give us? All right, X squared minus, all right, if we distribute the X here, that'll be X to the fourth over three factorial. And then if we keep going, that'll be X to the sixth. We don't need to go above five. Five will be good enough, right? Now we're distributing this term. So if we distribute this term through there, that'll give us uh, x cubed over 2 factorial and then minus x to the fifth over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. That would be 2 times 6, right? So 12. And then the next one would be x to the seventh. We don't need to go that far. All right, now we're on this one. We're distributing this one to everything. That'll give us x to the fourth over three factorial. And then that next one will be x to the ninth. So we don't need to go that far. Now we're on this one. I know you're like, how far do we have to go? Well, you have to make sure you go far enough. You kind of want to do more than you think you have to to make sure you got them all. All right, distributing to here, that'll give us get x to the fifth over four factorial. And then the next one will be x to the seventh, so we're good. And then if you go to distribute this one, you're going to be at x to the sixth. That's far enough, OK? But you need to go further than you think you have to, because sometimes you end up with like terms that will cancel each other out, and then you have to go further than that. So like, go farther than you think you need to. If they ask for the first four non-zero terms, go to the fifth power, or even the sixth. Does this make sense? Or just go a little further than you think you need to. Now we're going to combine like terms. I know you're super excited. <laughs> like all algebra here. All right, so we have x. And then we're looking for anything squared. So just an x squared, good. And then we're looking for anything to the third. So that's these two terms here. All right, that's minus a six plus a half if we combine those. So minus a six plus a half would be three six. So that's two six or one third. So x cubed over 3, one third x cubed. Do you still have that calculator out? Because these fractions might get a little ridiculous in a second. OK, cool. All right, now we're on to the fourth. Oh, look what happened. See, and that's why we needed to go one further. We needed to go to the fifth, because they ask you for the first four terms. But the fourth power canceled out. So now we need to go to the fifth. 
See how there's three of them? Five fact, do you guys remember five factorial? That's one 120th, good. Minus 112 plus, do you remember four factorial? Or can somebody slam that in the calculator? I'm not gonna make you do that without a calculator. Your common denominator would be 100. What's that? 1 30th x to the fifth. So the moral of the story is always go a little bit further than you have to because the series are, you're multiplying an infinite number of terms together, but you only have to go far enough, but sometimes stuff cancels and then you have to go a little bit further. Uh, I don't know, Jenna just told me. Yeah, it is negative. I have my answer here. I did the problems yesterday. So. 